It's a busy week in the world of politics, and there's certainly a lot at stake for American Super Tuesday. Kicks off this week, where millions of voters across 15 states and one U.S. territory gearing up to cast their ballots in the 2024 presidential primaries and caucuses. President Joe Biden is also set to deliver his annual State of the Union address. That's Thursday, just two days after Super Tuesday. For more on what we can expect this week, we're joined by Jeanette Lowe, who is the Strategist Managing Director of Policy Research. Great to have you here with us this morning. So first and foremost, as you think out to Super Tuesday and how that sets up for voters, what are we going to look to understand more clearly here from Super Tuesday and, and kind of apply that to what's yet to come later on this year in November? So I think, um, first of all, thanks for having me. And so with Super Tuesday, one of the things that we're really looking for here is, you know, we do expect Trump to do very well in all of the states that are having primaries on Tuesday. The one um, place that we might be looking to see if there might be some differences would be a state like Virginia. Um, so Nikki Haley is still staying in this primary race. She won her first primary over the weekend with the District of Columbia, um, but she is very far behind in the delegate count and she should be after Super Tuesday as well. But she's still looking at this dynamic of saying, you know, in certain states, there are 40 percent of the voters who are still voting for her. She'll be looking at a state like Virginia, where recent polling had her down just by eight points against former President Trump. So she might be looking to actually stay in this race longer than Super Tuesday, which could create an interesting dynamic. The longer she stays in, she continues to attack the former president. That could hurt his campaign going into the general election. Um, and that's also something that we've been watching quite closely because Trump Trump is actually having some of the best polling that he's had since he started his political career. And we have the general election kind of seemingly already decided with Trump and Biden. But the longer Haley stays in this race, I think, is kind of important um, in, in trying to determine what happens going down the stretch, because obviously polling is quite early and we can't make any real assumptions just yet on what will happen in November. And Jeanette, digging into that a little bit earlier, talking about Nikki Haley's strategy and her influence at this point, within uh, the nominee, within the election process. I guess, how are investors, have investors priced that in? And what does that mean just in terms of the ultimate impact that it could have on investment portfolios the longer that she stays in the race? Yeah, so we have uh, built election portfolios for if the Democrats have a sweep in the election and if Republicans have a sweep in the election. And what we've been finding right now is the way that those portfolios are trading you see investors basically giving a 50-50 chance to whether Biden will win or whether Trump will win. And we think one of the reasons is that this is just not a normal election cycle. The former president has a number of cases that he still has to contend with ahead of the November elections. Um, we had the Supreme Court last week decide that it's going to do oral arguments in April to decide whether or not he has presidential immunity. Then that will have a, a ripple effect as to whether or not his January 6th trial will take place before the election. And these things are all important. It's difficult for investors to price in which candidate will ultimately win because of them. And it also creates this interesting dynamic with Nick Haley, Nikki Haley still in the race. Could she be waiting to see if there might be um, a path forward for her if there is an issue with either a legal case for Trump, if there's a health issue with Trump, things of that nature? It creates a lot more of different scenarios that I think investors have to think about. And so it's a little hard for them to be able to price the election in this early. 